The world we live in consists of magnificent geography. From high peaks to the deepest trenches, our nature surprises us in every possible way. The unique, yet splendid geographical feature involves with today's story is called the steppe. A steppe is a dry or a grassy land that extends for several miles without any considerably tall trees. Even though the plain is fertile enough for the grass, it is not so fertile to support a forest. You can even find rivers in such plains, but not forests. Steppes experience major seasonal differences. Temperature in the summer could go up to 45 degrees Celsius, and in winter, the temperature could drop to 55 degrees Celsius. Eurasian Steppe is considered to be the largest steppe in the world. Regardless of being one of the most extreme places on Earth, humans made the steppes, especially the Eurasian Steppe, their homeland. These people were commonly called the Steppe Tribe. The unique characteristic of this tribe is, unlike most tribes, Steppe Tribe always wander around without settling in one place. This behavior earned them the name, the Nomadic Tribe. Except in a few favored locations, the grasslands of these steppes were unsuitable for intensive farming and are unable to support a dense population. This harsh environment made these people to adopt the nomad lifestyle since it was difficult to settle in one place. The steppe tribe of the Eurasian steppe holds a particular importance in the records of history. That might be mainly because the steppe itself is a prominent one since it stretched from edge of today's Hungary all the way to Mongolia in Asia. So basically the steppe covers from east to west of the Asian continent, forming a clear grassy passageway. The nomadic tribes of the Eurasian steppe were possibly the first people to domesticate and ride horses. Horses could be considered as sensitive creatures and wouldn't be involved with anyone or anything that they don't trust. So the nomads unlocked the secrets of this powerful yet graceful creature in order to earn their trust and forged a bond with them. They even was able to milk the horse. In the beginning, the people of the steppe tribe was strictly nomadic. Their main source of survival was hunting. In such a scenario, a horse seemed as an ideal target, since hunting a horse is much easier and worthwhile than hunting an animal of the similar size, which are often predatory animals. Also, horses are relatively predictable animals. They always rotate around the same water pools, grasslands and even take the same routes. So it is not so hard to find a horse to hunt than other animals. It could be assumed that this was the initial attraction the steppe people had towards horses. But later, they started to notice the strength and speed of an animal. They realized the extensive uses they could get once they tame a horse. Owning horses definitely made the life of steppe people more adventurous. Horses became the speed and the muscle the humans never had, allowing them to explore the world around them at a faster phase. The power of horses made them adventurous and fearless. Their lives entwined with the animal and horses no longer became just food. Being nomads made them to lead a simple lifestyle. Everything they possessed were portable, including their houses. Shelter was a necessity when living in the steppes. Just as the extreme seasons, the temperature at day can be extremely hot and temperature at night can go down to semi-freezing points regardless of the season. Shelter was therefore a vital factor for the survival. Their nomadic lifestyle did not allow them to have permanent houses, so they ended up using portable ones. These portable houses were named yurts. They are basically round tents, covered with animal skin, most frequently that being the horse skin. 
The first written description of a yurt was recorded by the ancient Greek historian Herodotus. Even though the structure of the house was simple, finding raw materials needed to the built was tough, since there are no trees that were essential to build the structure, could be found in the steps. So it was essential to carry the needed material with them as they travel. Until they had the knowledge to bond with horses, the steppe people had to carry their basic needs, along with the construction materials for their houses, everywhere they go. But with horses, mobility became much easier and soon they developed the wagon to help them to carry their needs. Wagons are not the only things they innovated, but also chariot, cavalry and horse archery were also introduced by the steppe people. With their tribe groups expanding, they couldn't afford to solely depend on horses. So eventually, they adopted animal husbandry to their lifestyles and started to travel along with their herds of animals such as sheep and cows. By being the masters of horses, led them to have the luxury of being recognized as excellent traders. Since no other tribe knew or could tame a horse, steppe people traded off their knowledge and horses with settlers. Since horse itself was a graceful and a powerful animal, it was not difficult to get the settlers attraction towards them and many were interested in acquiring the knowledge. There is evidence that the steppe people started to domesticate large groups of horses. By trading off their horses and knowledge with the settlers, the nomads were able to fulfill their needs, which their lifestyle did not allow them to have. Even though the majority of the steppes are vast expanse of uniform grasslands, there were also small fertile farming areas, often on the banks of large rivers, the shores of lakes, or in oases in desert regions. On discovering such lands, some of the steppe people began to settle. But these lands were not able to provide them all their needs. So few of them continued their nomad lifestyle in order to provide for the settlement which the land failed to do. Such tribes were called semi-nomad tribes. Eventually, the settled tribes began to rely on horses when trading, just as the steppe people did. And steppes are the ideal routes which horses could comfortably travel. These travelers began to pass through the semi-nomad settlements. The semi-nomads provided them shelter to rest in exchange for the goods they possessed. So their settlements functioned as nodes in long-distance trade networks. They then began to gain control of such areas and started to impose a tax on the travelers, which would allow them to access their needs in a much easier way. The traders began to use these routes and both the trader and the settler began to benefit from it. An example for such an established trade route is the Silk Route that connects the East with the West. For the most part, the steppe people were believed to stick to their nomad behavior. Even if they do settle, the settlement seemed to rely on the nomad group that was formed within the community. With their lives becoming more adventurous, the steppe people began to explore the surrounding extensively since their lifestyle was tangled up with speed. This caused the steppe tribe to divide. Eventually, it gave birth to many sub-tribes. Some of them are Sumeria tribe, Sidi tribe, Samashi tribe and much more. Because they had the power over horses, they were far ahead of ordinary settlers. So they ended up conquering a vast majority of civilizations they came across. As for the early records, Sumerians were considered to be the first tribe to wage war against other civilizations. To those places they conquered, the steppe people induced their cultural traces, lifestyles and even languages. It could be seen in earlier languages, there is a vast similarity between them, as if they were all derived from one single language. It is believed that the steppe people is greatly responsible for this similarity.
Linguists explain that after conquering other cultures, the people in these settlements dropped their language and adopted the steppe tribe's language because with a language comes power, wealth, and most importantly, freedom. Linguists point out that many of the historical languages used in settlements around Europe and Asia seemed as they've been derived from a common language source. This common source language is called Proto-Indo-European, but no written record of Proto-Indo-European language could be found, so no one knows how the language actually looks like. Linguists try to reconstruct it by using the similarities of the historical languages, such as Latin and Sanskrit, which do have records. The language does brings out the authoritarian and ruthless nature of the nomads. The ancient Greek language itself is believed to be a derivative of Proto-Indo-European. It is also believed that a language can reflect the cultural traces associated within the community. Under this hypothesis, linguists claim that early steppe people domesticated cattle, horses, and dogs. They also transported goods not only on land, but also by and across water. Wagons dragged by their horses is another mode of transportation used by nomads on land. Their religious deities mostly revolved around the sky. The sky god could be seen as the supreme god in almost all the religions existed among them. Even though they did not keep written records of their heroic adventures, they have used oral heroic poetry to praise those times of adventure. But they have painted their journeys in cave walls they came across. In almost every painting, we can see sketches of horses, which proves how close the animal was with their lifestyles. Because of their fearlessness and hunting skills, the steppe people eventually ended up being excellent warriors. Their mastery in bow wielding and horse riding made them feared by the rest of the settlers that were spread out across the Asian continent. So they were often viewed as barbarians by most. Because of their wandering off behavior, they often came across other civilizations and ended up getting into war. Some scholars explain that the nomads fought with settlers out of necessity. These scholars explain that when trading, the settlers might have run out of their need to depend on nomad products. So eventually, the nomads didn't have much they can trade with the settlers. In order to fulfill their needs, all they could do was threaten the settlers with their fighting skills. In the early period of time, it could be seen that nomad tribes were able to conquer a vast majority of the settlements. Because during this time, the nomads were only traveling in small groups, even with excellent fighting skills, they couldn't have dominated settlements that fast. Archaeologists have hypothesized that since nomads were frequent travelers, they eventually became host of a deadly plague that only they are immune to. Everywhere they go, they infected the settlements with this plague, and everyone in the settlement died from it. Ultimately, the nomads took over the settlement. As they came across other tribes, the nomads also seemed to have absorbed the ways of them into their culture. So we can see a rapid evolvement in the traditions of every steppe tribe. Of the many religions existed among them, Tengrism seemed to have a solid influence and its followers could be seen even at present time. The religion mostly revolves around shamanism. According to the followers, the existence is sustained by the god Tengri, the god of eternal blue sky. Tengri is considered as the supreme god, the creator of the universe itself. They also believe in the existence of other gods such as E.J., the goddess of fertile earth, Erlik, the god of the underworld, spirits of nature and ancestors. One of the most interesting facts about Tengrism is that it acknowledged the existence of other religions. 
They believe that there are many paths to God, not just Tengrism. All that matters is being righteous in thoughts and upright in spirit. The leaders of the tribes are considered as descendants of Tengri. But they have to be righteous, or the Supreme God himself will remove them from grace. Even though they were nomads, the steppe tribes managed to establish many empires. Nomad warriors conquered settlements around them by riding their horses. Siongnu Empire, Kushan Empire, Hephthalite Empire, Hunnic Empire and even Mongolian Empire are few of the many nomadic empires that came to life. The Huns and Mongolians could be considered as the most significant empires formed by nomads. Great war and victory will surely give birth to many heroes and great leaders. Attila the Hun is one such great leader of the Hunnic Empire. During his reign, he was the most feared enemy of the Roman Empire. Attila united tribes of the Hun Kingdom and was said to be a just ruler to his own people. His kingdom was mainly centered around present-day Germany, so victories in warfare earned him a prominent place in German heroic legends. Unlike most nomads, Attila was given proper education and skills, which helped him to be the ultimate warrior the Hunnic Empire has ever seen. He was well trained in archery, sword fighting, and how to ride and care for horses at a very young age. Attila is believed to have the ability to speak and read, both Gothic and Latin, and learned military and diplomatic tactics through reading. Attila's death was not the fate you might have predicted for a great warrior and military leader. He died mysteriously on the day of his wedding. Unfortunately, after his death, the great empire he built died with him. Another great leader that lived among the nomad tribes is Chinggis Khan. Chinggis Khan also united many nomad tribes to form the largest contiguous empire, the Mongolian Empire. Unlike the Hunnic Empire, the Mongolian Empire did not die with Chinggis Khan, but only grew further lasting through many generations. Temujin was the name given to this heroic leader at his birth. So Chinggis Khan was the honorary title given to him, which has the meaning, the universal ruler. It is mentioned that Temujin did not accept this honorable title until he was around 40 years of age. This clearly shows that he never forced his people to address him with the title, but the people themselves gave it to him. So the ruler has made a startling impact on his people. At the time of his death, the empire had already extended across Asia, from the Pacific Ocean to the Caspian Sea. The tribes he united does have something that would add value to form the empire. For example, Chinggis Khan was particularly interested in uniting with the Altai tribe, not just because they were excellent warriors, but also because of the Altai mountain, which was the home for the Altai people. The mountain had a significant geographical importance. They were excellent shamans as well. It is mentioned, when the Altai tribe fought against Chinggis Khan, the chief of the Altai tribe unleashed a powerful storm on Chinggis Khan's army. But ultimately, they were defeated and were joined with the Mongolian Empire. After they were joined to the Mongolian Empire, Chinggis Khan built a wide system of roads which was carved through the Altai Mountains to safely deliver messages to the other end of the Mongolian Empire. Chinggis Khan could be considered as a leader that never sought glory. It is said, the Mongolian leader never allowed anyone to paint his portrait, sculpt his image, or engrave his likeness on a coin. The first images of him is assumed to be appeared after his death. Some argue that this is not because he didn't seek glory or fame, but because he didn't want his enemy to recognize who he is. 
Because the steppe people were often viewed as barbarians, many has failed to notice the importance they have played to become the civilization we are today. The nomads themselves doesn't seem to be the type to keep records of their adventures. This reluctance put them on the disadvantage of making the future generations disregard their side of the story and many accomplishments and adventures they have made for themselves. Majority of the texts that mention about them are from the settlers who were their enemies. So naturally, they see the intruders as a horrific barbaric warrior that are feared by all. Therefore, the knowledge and luxury they have added to their lifestyle is often left out. Acquiring the knowledge to tame wild horses to ride itself is a milestone accomplished by these tribes. This is because horses played a vast contribution throughout history. They were the mode of transportation everyone relied on up until very recently. Almost every war was won on the backs of horses. So I personally think seeing the steppe people just as barbarians would be very unreasonable considering the contributions they have given towards evolution. What do you guys think of this story? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Please consider to like, subscribe, comment and share this video since it'll help this channel to grow so much. My Patreon and subscribers, thank you so much for your support. I hope to see you again in another story to tell.